I, I want to start to, by thanking some folks because my job has been so much easier because I've had the opportunity to work with some amazing people. And my first thank you has to go to Colin McGee. And he's not in here because I think he's flying with the governor somewhere right now. I mean, they're already in an airplane going, you know, how'd that, how that happen? Um, but uh, he helped me get, get started and situated. He was in here doing this role interim before I took the job and, uh, and he was just a tremendous asset for me in handing, this, uh, handing the baton over. And I, I got to move forward because, uh, in a rapid pace because of his, his, uh, his handoff. Um, I'd like to thank Tony. Tony's gone, but Tony's been fantastic. Uh, he's in the ETS team. You guys have done a fantastic job. Uh, Tony's been not just a, an institutional knowledge guy for me, but he's also been a buddy. Uh, he helped me get my rental. Funny story how that all plays out, but uh, you know, like I needed a rental in town and I was at a place and he knew a person and we were having coffee and he said, hang on, I'll get your rental. And he dialed up the phone. And he says, "Hey, give Russ the rental." So, hey, I got a rental. So it was it was good. So, I, I got to thank Tony for that too. Um, obviously, the business council and Sean and, and the team. It's been a fantastic journey. Um, it's been a job that has been very fulfilling, and uh, I'm excited to be here. And I've got a lot of uh, a lot of energy to put forward into this. And I continue to talk about it being legacy work. But as the governor's done his legacy work, it's now my turn. I'd like to do some legacy work in the, in the broadband uh, uh, arena here in the state of Wyoming with all the amazing people that are here. Uh, I'd like to thank um, Cindy, her group. Uh, she's been a fantastic mentor. She's also done a great job organizing things. I wish I had half the skill set that she has in putting things together. Uh, just fantastic. Um, uh, the Broadband Advisory Council. So these are my boys. This is my, these, this is my homies down here. Right, so if you can stand up, council members, because I want you guys to give these guys a. Oh, there's there's a there's a, stra a couple stragglers out there, but this is the Broadband Advisory Council. These people got seated in June, and within you know a very short amount of time, they've rolled their sleeves up. They put a lot of time and energy in. They created a broadband plan in 38 days. This and they've got subcommittees. We're focused on all sorts of different things. These guys are a dedicated group of individuals. Doug Wilson, the uh, chairman, wave Doug. I've, I've been blessed to have him as a chairman. So give these guys a round of applause because they've done it. Uh, where's Teal? Back in the back. Look at everybody. Turn around. Look at Teal. Teal, wave again. Teal Wyckoff. No. <laughs> Teal Wyckoff is uh, she's the GIS person uh, from Wyoming, Wyges, and you'll see we're standing up a broadband website and mapping project today because of her efforts because of her efforts so thank you teal you're fantastic we'll give you a clap afterwards all right we'll give you a clap when we see it so you know we're not going to clap in advance we're going to see whether or not you did good work um kelly cole obviously she's not here she was the utah broadband quarter she helped us write the plan fantastic if you haven't seen the plan go look at the plan it's on the wyoming business council website under the broadband uh, heading troy babbitt i saw you this morning where are you at troy yeah, there you are. Troy Babbitt, everybody knows Troy. Troy was doing this in, kind of uh, in, a, in some form or fashion the last few years. Uh, he's been an institutional uh, guide, guiding light for me and has really helped me get started as well. So thank you, Troy, for all your efforts. Um, and finally, you're just kind of the amazing people of Wyoming. I, I've been overwhelmed at the generosity, uh, the helpfulness, the, 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 the hardworking, uh, you know, very values-driven people that I've met in Wyoming. I've met a lot. I've met a lot because I'm doing a lot of outreach and a lot of, a lot of county commission readings, a lot of just city meetings, and a lot of just sitting down with folks. And as the governor said, I think by far the biggest asset this state has is its people. You know, I think we can talk all day long about companies and what they do great and, and you know, folks that are doing good work, but I'm going to tell you right now, the people of this state are amazing. And I've had the opportunity to work in some of the rural committees and, and you know, get involved in some of the business council ex extracurricular stuff. And I, I'll tell you, the people are, are amazing. It's, it's fun. So we've had tremendous success. We're bringing focus and educating, uh, educating folks. We're building trust. We're setting a standard. And others are starting to take note. Uh, I've already had calls from a couple other states asking me to give talks on what we're doing because we're that far ahead. 
which is kind of fun. It's kind of hear that. It's kind of fun to hear that because when I came in, the the state of the state was Wyoming's not very well connected. Wyoming's not doing much in the broadband, you know, in the broadband arena. Boy, we don't have a lot of broadband. We're we're sure behind. That's not true. You know, what's true is we just had to get all the information together, get people organized, and now we've got a lot of people around the country saying, "Wow, that's that's take note. These guys are doing some stuff, and we're doing some really unique stuff." Um, other people are taking note because I'm going to see if this works. I see. There we go. I'm going to emphasize this for a minute. And if you've heard me, and many of you have, because I see a lot of friendly faces in here that I've, I've, I've been around talking to. But uh, it's because we've chosen to build our effort around our mission. We, the board, the citizens, the cities, the counties, the state, the providers around the state, are all buying into our mission. Right? When I came on board, I said, there's only one way we're going to go forward. We're going to go forward with a mission-driven program. Not a proprietary agenda-driven program. That's an interesting thing to think about in this, in this arena, especially because we're in the public sector. It was all new for me, this public sector. And when the mission becomes the loudest voice in the room, everybody wins. Everybody get that? When the mission becomes the loudest voice in the room, everybody wins. Right? So what's our mission? Next slide, please. <laughs> I'll just do this. Um, to enrich the lives of all citizens and businesses of Wyoming. To enable economic diversification for every citizen and business of Wyoming. For Wyoming to become a leader in the digital world. By ensuring that every citizen biz and business has access to affordable, reliable, redundant, and future-proof broadband. I'm going to talk to that for a minute. The governor talked about definitions. One of the hardest things that I've had to do since I've been here in five months is try to define something. The minute you define something, somebody says, why you can't define that, right? When the mission becomes the loudest voice in the room, everybody wins. So when we start to talk about definitions of affordability, we start to talk about definitions of redundancy. We start to talk about definitions of, of reliability. Those are scary topics for some people. But if Wyoming is to achieve being a leader in the country, we need to have some of those uncomfortable conversations. And to our credit, we're having some good collaborative conversation amongst our people. Providers, public, private, everybody. So to our credit, we're having, we're having some success. Every Wyoming citizen. This is kind of fun. Every business corridor. Makes me, I, I could do, you know, I could do something like this maybe. That would be more fun. Every business corridor, right? Has access to broadband speeds that exceed federally defined standards no later than 2023. Which at this point in time means 25 down, three up for the home, gig down, 100 up for the business corridors. That's the federally defined standard by 2023. Now, because we've tied it to federally defined standards, that could change, right? It could be 50 and 20. Could be two gigs and a gig. But right now, that's the federally defined standards and that's our vision and mission for every citizen and every business by 2023. Part of our vision and mission is that we have added a moonshot or a BHAG. Who knows what a BHAG is? Right, no, it's not, we're not talking nasty about our wives. BHAG. I know, that was, I had to work that one in. I told my wife I was gonna say it. She's, 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 she's so much not. You'll know, but she thought it was funny. Anyway, BHAG is, Big, hairy, audacious goal. See, that's actually a good thing, right? So what is your big, hairy, audacious goal? What is your moonshot? What is the thing that's gonna drive you? What is the legacy work you're gonna do, right? We've added this to our mission. And to be honest, this is what really is driving me internally. It's to leave no Wyoming citizen behind. It's to position every business in Wyoming to compete globally. Every business, 
When I'm sitting in Lusk and talking to the Niobrara County Commissioners and they're telling me their biggest source of business are all the small businesses called farmers and ranchers, position every business in Wyoming to compete globally. Part of the mission. Set a standard for all others to follow by 2025. Do legacy work. Set a standard by others to follow by 2025. That, I wake up with that in my brain every day. I'm a servant leader. I love that statement. I want this state to be a leader by 2025. There's the legacy work. I want people to look at us not as, oh, that poor little state. I want them to look at us as, wow, that state that really can do something unique because their people can collaborate, because their people want to collaborate, because their people are hardworking, and it's a, and it's a state that wants innovation and change and to be a leader. How do we get there? There we go. That's good. By involving passionate, knowledgeable people who understand collaboration and are not afraid to be challenged, able to come to a consensus by maintaining a focus on our mission and not allowing proprietary agenda issues to override our mission. You've met the board. They're doing a lot of hard work. It's a great representation of this state. We've got public people, we've got private people, we've got federal guys on there. This is a good board. This is a, this, if we, we, we have no excuses now. We have no excuses. My biggest role has been to provide clarity and sift through the perceptions that have been accepted as reality. Everybody understands that. I've said this a few times in a few of my talks. Perception is reality, right? The perception was Wyoming doesn't have broadband. The reality is Wyoming has very, very good broadband. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, Representative Henderson sends me a, uh, a LinkedIn post that he receives, and he says, hey, Russ, look at this. And it's a gentleman that's up north, and he's writing about the fact that he doesn't have good connectivity up north in a major city where one of our major players is, where I know we have very, very good connectivity. And it goes on and on in this public forum about how it's about time Wyoming does something, $10 million is a drop in the bucket. Is anybody listening? <coughs> I picked up the phone and I rang him up and I said, hey, I'm listening. Tell me what you're talking about. He says, well, I want to do something up here in Sheridan and I understand that we don't have any broadband. And I said, well, you understand wrong. I said, you have broadband. You have fiber. You have very good fiber, as a matter of fact. Well, I want to try to do something that's kind of high techy. I said, okay, great. What do you want? I don't know. <laughs> How much bandwidth do you need? I don't know. I said, when you know, please call me. I'm listening, but please cease and desist your posting of statements that are untrue. Because in a public forum like that, that can be perceived then as reality. And it's not real. If you needed fiber in Sheridan, I know somebody getting fiber in Sheridan. We have plenty of bandwidth to get him fiber. So stop it. Let's stop propagating the wrong information. Let's start talking about what's true in this state, right? The stats, here's the truth. As the governor said, we're number one in bandwidth per student. It's a pretty big deal, we need to keep talking about it. We need to say it out loud, right? We need to say this. When I get on the phone, I, I, I'm now part of uh, the NTIA's State Broadband Leaders Network. And I went on the phone the first day to talk to their director and I said, well, here's what we're doing, here's where we are, and by the way, we're number one in connectivity to the student. And she was blown away. She's the federal person. She was blown away. She said, would you please present to this board of 85 next week on Wyoming and what they're doing? I said, absolutely. So I got to give a talk to everybody on that network about what Wyoming's doing. And it was very, very well received. I received a number of emails, a number of phone calls following, saying, wow, we had no clue. It's because we're not promoting. You know, a lot of the providers do a bad job of self-promoting. We've been talking about that since the beginning. I've been talking to a lot of the providers. You know, I see a couple of them smiling at me right now. You know, it's, 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 a, it's something we need to do better. We need to promote the good work that's going on. We've got a lot of fiber to a lot of municipalities. I do not have this mapped definitively yet, but I will tell you, you're gonna be blown away at the amount of fiber the state has through its cities and municipalities. We're, we're gonna talk about the map here in a minute. We've got gig to the premise rolling out all over this state. 
You know, when the governor started to rattle off a few of those, those, uh, um, those stats that he had, uh, you know, I think we also need to take some time to recognize not just our fiber players, but our creative players, our, 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 our multiple uh, technology providers, the ones that are gonna help us get to the last mile. We're gonna look at being technologically agnostic. We're gonna look at, you know, copper. We're gonna look at wireless and we'll look at fiber. So if we could just for a second, because I think we didn't do our, a, fair, a fair just intro, can some of my wireless folks, Brett, Brian, Greg, Matt, some of you guys stand up for a second. Stand up. Anybody that's doing any kind of wireless stuff in the state, <coughs> Union, you guys are doing some wireless stuff. Stand up. Anybody's doing that kind of stuff? Patrick? Good, Barbara. These guys here are the guys that are going to help us get those hard to reach areas done. Right? You can't take fiber to the, to, the, to the sprinkler, right? But these guys can run, run, uh, run good towers, good antennas, great infrastructure out there off the sprinkler heads, off the silos, off the different unique places. So I think we need to give these guys a round of applause because they've done tremendous work getting last mile stuff done. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We're getting redundancy to challenging areas. We're bringing the attention. We're bringing that to our attention, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of discussion. There's been a lot of noise about certain areas, and th there wasn't a real good understanding of what redundancy meant when I came on. And so we've had some conversations about what redundancy is, and we're talking intelligently about trying to bring redundancy to areas, right? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, from unserved to served, I, I have to talk about this just again. One more story. I I am the broad. I, I'm hired. They gracious they bring me on you're the broadband guy for the state of wyoming congratulations here's your rental so i go and i get my rental and guess who's unserved <laughs> in cheyenne right so what would my perception of cheyenne connectivity be yeah my, my my perception would be it's not very good when in fact we might have gig to the print don't we in cheyenne huh huh yeah <laughs> but at my house i didn't have it I was able to reach out to a, a very uh, collaborative player in the state to say, boy, I'm challenged. And he said to me, let me see if I can help you with the challenge. And within less than a week, less than a week, I had 50 megs to my home. So I went from unserved to 50 megs, and he was able to pick up a new little area to deliver service to some folks. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Those people that just stood up, those are the people that are doing the things that need to get done, and they're doing it quick, right? They're doing it, they're answering the phones. We're having very good conversation around these kind of things. We've got $30, $30 million that's been awarded to the state in CAF 2, uh, Connect America Fund 2, which means that, that the, the feds have awarded some money to some companies to deliver broadband to these very hard to reach unserved areas. And they've got, a, they've got a job within six years to get 95% billed out to those areas, which is, I mean, that, my job's done, right? I'm finished, right? I, I, we're, my workers to drop the, drop the thing that doesn't work and I'm out, right? The, the, uh, the truth is there's going to still be a lot of challenging areas. And the fun thing is we're collaborating with those folks and we're talking about how can we help now? Because this is an area, this last mile stuff, these, these last, we call them pepper flakes out there in the middle of nowhere. You know, they're gonna be a challenge to reach and it's gonna take some of us with creative thought and maybe different economic models to help make that happen for every citizen of Wyoming, <laughs> right? And we're having those conversations right now. Just the fact that in the stats that we're, you know, we've got a plan, we've got a council, we've got a grant, we've got a map, we've got a site. In four months, we're bringing focus, we're bringing energy, we're bringing attention, and we're starting to do some good work. Everybody's wondering about the grant, right? We've got this $10 million grant. Um, it's sitting in the bank right now. Hopefully, we're getting really good interest. Um, uh, while it sits there, you know, we, you know, the, I came in and I looked at the, uh, the administrative procedures around our grant, and the application process is going to be very onerous. And I, having gone out and met with a lot of the very small communities in this state, realized these people don't have that kind of time. You know, Stacy in Saratoga, as I sat there with her, and we talked about whether or not she could fill out a grant form. 
It made me sick to my stomach to think about her trying to fill out a grant form, post all the information, uh, contact all the people that had to be contacted, and do all that, and then to end up with nothing because she didn't qualify. So I said, let's develop a pre-application because this whole grant is contingent on whether or not you can demonstrate your area is unserved, period. So I've got a one-pager that says, demonstrate you're unserved, and then we'll talk to you, right? So that's where we're at right now, just so everybody knows that's the status of the grant. We will have the application complete by the end of December. We'll be probably looking at funding any kind of projects we receive sometime Q1. We'll be looking at some Q1 funding. So if you know folks out there, what was interesting is too that, that hours after I put that, uh, that uh, the Wyoming Business Council put on our website that uh, we had a pre-application in play for this 10 million bucks, I received a phone call from a very, very big provider in this state that said to me, hey, we might be interested. You know, how does this work and what's the timing on it and all that kind of stuff. So just the energy that we're creating around, around this stuff has been fantastic for the state. So I'm excited about that. What gets measured gets done. This was a great statement I used to use when I was, uh, when I was uh, working for different companies. But if you, do, if you, if you want to know how things are going, start to measure it, get a baseline, and start to determine whether or not you're moving things forward, right? I think one of the challenges, when I sat down with uh, Governor Meade last week, we talked about, he said, well, where have we gone? Where have we come from? You know, and I said, well, unfortunately, we weren't really measuring, right? There wasn't really any kind of metric that was laid down to say, let's grow from here and let's get to another, another level, right? So we're going to change that. What gets measured gets done. It's time to quantify so we can measure our progress. There's four areas of focus in our plan right now. It's mapping, it's a public-private partnership and the funding opportunities, it's recognizing our barriers and opportunities, and it's emerging technologies. Um, I'm not gonna talk to those. I, I'm gonna tell you right now that we have subcommittees that are addressing all of these, so they're always going to have focus. Every time we get together, the subcommittees have met, they're talking. The fun thing is emerging technologies, one of their, one of their guiding principles right now is if there's anybody out there perfecting emerging technologies in rural areas, prove your concept in Wyoming. There is no better place in the country to prove a rural concept than in Wyoming. So that's first and foremost on their agenda as far as emerging technologies are concerned. What I do want to talk about now is I'm gonna talk about mapping because that's, I think, why we're here today, to see what's going on and what are we doing with the map. We have created a site, yobbmap.org. This is the site here, this is phase one. I'm not gonna take any critical comments around this because it's phase one, all right? We can talk constructively around what we can do, phase two, three, four, and five, but phase one had to be stood up in a week and a half and phase one has been stood up in a week and a half with some very intelligent back-end GIS components to it. So, uh, and again, Teal's gonna drive here. I'm just gonna kind of look at it. We're gonna talk about it, if I can see it a little bit better. But you're gonna see that it's, it's, uh, it's got a little bit of a, a why, a what, and a how right here. So there's a little intro here talking about what we wanna try to accomplish, why we're trying to accomplish it, and what we're, where we're going with this information little contact information down there, and then ta -da, 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 ta da right? So the big, the big news right now is we're gonna start measuring things. What gets measured gets done. We're gonna start mapping the state of Wyoming. Those of you that are in this industry understand there's a map that sits out there on the FCC website that is based on voluntary information that's given to us by providers. When Teal and I went down and met with Denver and Colorado, who are many years ahead in this, in this space, they're having the same challenges still today. We're gonna to leapfrog those guys. They're still using the FCC data, right? We're gonna to start to get this thing down to maybe the address, we'll see. We're playing with that right now. If we can get that done, we can start to, we can start to serve every citizen in Wyoming, every business in Wyoming. Back to our mission, right? What are we trying to do? So this mapping project will allow us to start to collect data. We'll start to collect data on what your services are uh, and, and wh where they're going and where they're coming from. I understand the challenges of a mapping project. I understand the challenges of a mapping program. We're gonna try to get through some of those challenges. 
So after the mapping down below, we're gonna to start to try to collect some information from folks. We're gonna see if you know who your internet provider is. We're gonna see if you know what your technology is. We're gonna see if you know what your connection type is, what your connection speed is. Uh, what does that one say? Well, what is the, oh, we're gonna see if you know what your costs are. And can we keep your information? And what else do we have there? Would you like us to keep you involved, keep you, keep you up to date? So it's gonna have that information. Once you do this and you put your information in, a map will show. And this map will allow us to start to see, can you drill down on that for me too? South Africa, the Cape, see what Brad had done there. We'll be able to drill in on, on areas of Wyoming and have specific areas of coverage. Right now, <laughs> looks like, that looks like my Google Maps in downtown Denver. <laughs> you're not going anywhere fast, it's all red. Um, wh what you're gonna see is, uh, and I'm not sure, what, what am I looking at there, Teal? Oh, okay. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> anyway, can you, can you pull out so we can just kind of see what the map looks like with flakes and stuff so you can see different colors and stuff? There you go. And can you get to the map? Can you get to the map part where you can show the different layers of the GIS? There we go. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. The measles. Wyoming's got the measles. Now, what we're trying to do here is you'll be able to drill down by community, by anchor institution, by census block, uh, by county, uh, you're gonna be able to overlay different types of technology, pull certain technologies off. If you wanna see wireless, you can see wireless. If you wanna see fiber, you'll be able to see fiber. We're gonna start to map this. Again, this is in its infancy, it's days old. I contend we're close to Colorado and they've had five years, right? So imagine what we can do when we start to collect the data. Now the hardest part for us is going to be getting the word out so people do partake in this and it'll be on the provider's side to get that done. I'm gonna to talk to county commissioners, I'll be meeting with municipalities. We'll be doing all the things we can to continue to announce how we get it done. But you'll see, the map will be very detailed. It'll have different layers, uh, and it's already, you know, I don't, what, what do you got there, Teal? What are we looking at? It's got pretty colors. I guess what I'm trying to do is say, for our purposes today, we've stood this thing up in a, in a week and a half. We're gonna start to really work on this. Colorado got a, a substantial grant to get theirs done. We've done this, Teal and I, you know, just going back and forth, uh, chatting. So, you know, we're, we're being very efficient with what we have. Uh, we are, we've got a vision to be ahead of things, not be behind or not just catch up. So you'll see this map will, evolve and it'll evolve into a tool that we'll all be able to use. Uh, uncertain how we're gonna uh, uh, to uh, propagate data at this point in time, but uh, for our sake of today, I wanted you guys to see that we have a central point for information now for the state, as far as broadband is concerned. On that page, we can go ahead and zoom out of the map because I'll just show them a little bit more about on the page. Now go, go back to the home page of the map up top. So I think one of the things that we've had a, had a hard time doing is coordinating our, our energy around broadband. So I'd like this to be kind of our coordinated energy spot, center of the universe on broadband. I'm going to have, we've reached out to all the providers to ask them for their information, not for mapping purposes, just for information purposes. So there's a central point where people can go find a provider in the state of Wyoming. Where can I find a provider? Oh, I heard that XYZ company is in Laramie, you know, or XYZ company is up in Thermopolis. Uh, where's XYZ? How do I contact them? <laughs> we'll have a contact list of all, all, the, all the service providers in the state of Wyoming. We will have an FAQ page on here. And I think we've got a little bit, what is broadband? What is fiber? What is wireless? What is unlicensed wireless? What's mobile broadband? Those kind of things. This thing, I did this in about eight minutes, so let's not, let's not give it any kind of constructive thought right now, other than the <laughs> fact that we're gonna have an FAQ site to where people can come and there'll be a central point for definitions and, and information on broadband. What I'd like to see here too, is this is a collaborative effort. I'd like to see you guys chime in too. As you look at this site and you have constructive thoughts on the site, I would appreciate those things coming my way and, and helpful toward 
our mission of ensuring that we are a leader by which others will be following by 2025. Thanks, Teal. And now, back to the show. There we go. Um, for us to achieve the moonshot, we need to think outside our traditional thinking. Uh, as the governor spoke to, um, one of the things that we've kind of stumbled across is what if pipelines, when they're put in, had to run a little conduit next to them? What a novel thought. I'm sitting in Lusk. I'm trying to help serve the most unserved and underserved part of the state, the whole eastern part of the state. And lo and behold, somebody shows me One Oak Pipeline. Does anybody know where the One Oak Pipeline goes? Yeah, it goes from the uh, uh, top, top of the state east side to the very bottom of the state east side. If we would have had some, some vision around this, we put a little conduit inside that pipe or, or next to that pipe or a little part of that easement could have been communications and we'd have been serving, we'd have had competitive offerings in the most underserved, unserved part of the state. Novel thought, right? So why don't we start to think that way going forward? And I think we're gonna start talking that way. I've talked with the pipeline authority. I believe they are interested in hearing more and potentially embracing our thoughts around this. I think it's a good, I think it's a good thought. Um, we need to start to focus on what we can do and not what we can't do. Right? What can we do? What are those creative thoughts? I was just talking to some gentlemen earlier. You know, it's not just about the telecom industry. You know, what if the gas industry was talking to the telecom industry, was talking to the healthcare industry, was talking to and talking to? What can we do? Not what we can't do because I'm too busy working on my own project. It's hard to do in a state like this because it's such a small state, you know, and everybody is very focused on the little things that they're doing. But we need to come together and hopefully we can do that. Let me make sure I've talked to everything on there. You know, I just, it, the providers, it, the, that's the other thing that I, I got to talk to here is that when I came in, you know, it was kind of an us and them. I really believe we're building a little bit of trust between providers and, and, and us. You know, I think that the providers are now realizing they've got a champion up here. I'm a guy that's going to sit here and say, I can't believe how much money they've actually invested. I can't believe how much energy they're investing. The time they're now investing in some uncomfortable conversations around certain areas, right? They've invested a bunch. They've come in, they're coming up with innovative ways to serve. Uh, you know, we need to be technology agnostic. We need to look at all sorts of different technologies, whatever there is, whether it's, you know, Doug's a big low earth orbit satellite guy. He thinks tomorrow, you know, Elon Musk is gonna have hybrid balloon driven cars going around up above with, with satellites and we're gonna be out, everybody's gonna be served off of, off of that, right? I, whatever that is, I don't know what that technology is. That's why you're the subcommittee guy, I'm not that guy. But it, we, we just gotta keep an eye on all the, all the different types of technology. And a collaborative approach can do versus what we can't do. Won't get there without you. Every need, everybody needs to rally around the mission. So, you know, we're, we're excited about all the energy that's gone in so far. Again, here we are. I'm going into month number five. You know, uh, we've done a lot of good work in the four months we've been here. For me, it's been a fantastic first four months. It's been my honeymoon with the state of Wyoming where we've outlined a lot of plans, a lot of challenges, a lot of deliverables. I've made a lot of contacts. I've been begun to build some trust with the many players across this great state, but now it's time to get work done and commit to delivering to our mission, our vision, and our moonshot. So the honeymoon is over and it's time for us to get serious. So I've got a to-do list. You saw my props, right? If you don't know me, you're gonna get to know me. So my first to-do list I've done. It's to replace this with this, all right? So we're getting serious and we're moving in. I'm, I'm trying to buy a piece of real estate today too. And, and finally, I think this is just brilliant. I think this is the greatest thing ever. I'm going Christmas shopping. I'm buying all my Colorado family Christmas gifts. And I found the perfect Christmas gift for my folks in Colorado. It's Wyomingopoly. 
Hey, this is fantastic. I'm gonna get like 10 of them and I'm gonna send them down to Colorado and let everybody have it. The future's bright, the timing's right. It's time to set a broadband standard by which others will follow. I wanna thank you all for your time. I wanna thank you all for your support. And most of all, I wanna thank many of you for your friendship and look forward to meeting more of you in the future as we go forward. Thank you very much. <laughs>